Good morning, and welcome to our Wednesday morning recital. I'm Keith Rasmussen, the Associate Director of Music here at the United Methodist Church of Sun City Center. We welcome you to our weekly organ recital where we play um, serious sacred organ music and discuss more about the music so you understand the background and philosophy of what's going on. Before we begin the program, though, let's hear from Kevin and see what's coming up in our concert series. Kevin? Thank you, Keith. Here are some upcoming concerts you might be interested in, in attending. This Friday, October 23rd, we will have a terrific doo-wop group, Chicago Heat, singing your favorites from the 50s and 60s. You can come support the local South Shore Kiwanis chapter, raise money for scholarships for local high school seniors as you're taken back to a simpler time when music was beautiful and harmonic. Tickets are on sale in the church office for $10. As of this morning, we had about 40 tickets remaining, so there is still room for you if you're interested, but get your tickets soon or it may be sold out. We also have tickets on sale for a day or night of great family-friendly comedy. Yes, on Saturday, November 21st, Mike Williams, a nationally recognized Christian comedian, will be performing two shows, a 3 o'clock afternoon matinee and a 7 o'clock evening show. Tickets are $10 in advance or $15 at the door if available. This is a benefit show also to support the local chapter of Campaign Against Human Trafficking. We will be observing CDC recommended safety measures at these concerts, so please bring your masks. There will also be appropriate social distancing measures and limited 25% seating capacity. So plan to arrive a little early to ensure a good seat. And if you have questions about these or any of our concerts, please feel free to contact me, Kevin Goodnow, at 813-362-0956. Keith, back to you. Thank you, Kevin. It's good to know the concert series is going on, being well attended, and having lots of interesting things happening. There are some days when I'm thankful for things that have happened in my past. One of them is that I took French when I was in high school and college. I quit taking French when I discovered it didn't really help my career, but I developed a, an appreciation and a love for the French culture, and particularly the, the French organ music. And if you've heard many of these concerts, you'll notice we play a lot of French things. That's gonna change one of these days, but for right now, there's a lot of French things. Um, the first piece today is written by Louis-Claude Daquin, it's called The Cuckoo, and it's his, probably his favorite piece of all time, and it sounds like the cuckoo bird. Daquin was born in 1694 and died in 1772. That would have put him at the same time frame as Bach and Handel. He lived a little bit longer than both of them did. He lived in France. He was known as a fantastic harpsichordist and organist and was a, known as a dazzling performer. In 1739, he became the organist to King Louis XV. Can you imagine the performance pressure of playing for the King of France? This piece, the cuckoo, is taken from his 1735 harpsichord suite, Pièce de Clavecin, Troisième Suite, his best known piece. You'll hear many performances of this. I did a little bit of listening before this concert. Um, I listened to Diane Bish, I listened to Richard Elliott, I listened to it played by a pianist. And they all have um, their own level of issues and their own fine performances. Um, I have chosen one that is not quite as fast as some of my colleagues. I would hate to wear out the cuckoo bird. Um, you'll notice as I'm playing this that my left hand migrates back and forth from the bottom keyboard to the middle keyboard to get a different sound effect there. And I had to choose what stops I was going to use. So I used what is called a gap registration for the beginning. Um, it's thin and bright. 
and then the cuckoo, cuckoo is echoed on an eight-foot flute. Well, I had to choose which flute that I wanted to use, and I had to sound right in the top part of the register and the bottom. This one seemed to be the best combination. I can just imagine you saying, with all those stops, how do you choose? Well, I'm trying to tell you a little bit of how I make some of these decisions. I'm playing another piece on the, based on the cuckoo in a little while. I'm amazed that in this concert, which I've titled The Birds, that two of the three pieces are based on the cuckoo. I would hate to guess why. The Cuckoo by Louis-Claude de Quint. <laughs> this concert titled The Birds is The Swan by Camille Sanson. He lived from 1835 to 1921, a very long and productive life. He was a child prodigy, giving his first concerts when he was just like five and six years old. I think his father did not want him be, to become worn out when he was a child, so he held him back a little bit. So he just gave a first major recital when he was like 10 years old. Isn't that, isn't that discouraging? He was a fine concert pianist, and he was also trained as an organist because they thought at the conservatoire where he studied that he could make more money as an organist than he could as, as a pianist. And at the Church of the Madeleine, where he was the organist, of course, he played a lot of masses. There were many, many um, weddings and funerals per year, so you could make a comfortable living just playing the organ at the church. He was one of the best known French musicians of his day. He composed a number of things that you would probably recognize. One of them is the opera Samson and Delilah, based on the biblical theme. Another is one of my wonderful favorites, the Symphony Number no. 3 the organ 
symphony, which starts the last movement with a blinding C major chord on just about the full organ. He never wrote a fourth symphony because he said he had said everything that he could say in his symphony number three. There's a little story behind the carnival of the animals from which the swan comes. Um, it was released, it was composed well before his death, but released just before his death, so he would not be known as a composer of light music. Well, guess what is his favorite composition of all time? The Carnival of the Animals. And in this piece, transcribed by Alexandra Gimo, we talked about him last week as a, a, con as a colleague of Vidor. Um, the right hand has kind of an arpeggiated um, figure and the left hand has the melody played on the cello in the orchestra. It's a beautiful piece. You can imagine the swan serenely floating down the, the river or in the pond with its feet just paddling away really fast. So the swan by Camille Saint-Saëns. next piece this morning is the Capriccio on the Notes of a Cuckoo by Richard Purvis. I have played this before, but in this concert of the birds, I figured that it would be foul play if I didn't include a second cuckoo piece. 
Purvis was born in 1913 and died in 1994, well within my lifetime. He was known for expressive performances and interesting compositions. Some of my favorites are some of his compositions. He composed, like many composers, um, when, you, when he was not by pencil and paper, he got ideas for one of my favorite pieces, which I'll play for you at Christmas time. He was in a foxhole in France, and he got the idea of how to write that piece. He wrote it down later. I don't think he wrote it down in battle. Uh, Purvis was at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco from 1945 to 1971. I have been there twice. It seems rather like hallowed ground to me, where that wonderful 1934 Aeolian Skinner is installed, one of the best American classic instruments of that era, when um, Skinner and Harrison were still collaborating together on tonal concepts. This is in the ABA form, and you say, well, what does that mean? It has a beginning theme, it has a contrasting middle theme, and then it repeats the beginning theme again. The right hand actually plays on two keyboards at a time. The main theme is on the, is on the bottom keyboard, and then the cuckoo is on the second keyboard up where the right hand goes cuckoo, cuckoo. Capriccio on the Notes of a Cuckoo by Richard Purvis. <laughs> today is A Mighty Fortress by Homer Whitford. It's, people have mentioned to me that they enjoy the background behind the pieces, and I guess I would say I enjoy doing the research because I learn things that I never knew before that intrigue, in, intrigue and inspire me. Um, Whitford was born in 1892 in the eastern part of the United States. He died in 1980. He died after I left college. I never knew that before. He was one of the organists in the era where you had to study in France or Germany or you had not finished your organ training. He studied in France from 1934 to 1936. He studied organ and organ playing and conducting. This piece, I'll address each piece a little bit differently. This has an integration of styles. 
the melody is very prominent in both, but at the beginning, it's kind of like a Bach trio sonata where there's three parts. A little bit tricky in places, but it's like a trio sonata, which are very tricky. Um, so the first movement, or the first part of the piece has the melody in the left hand on the solo trumpet. And you say, well, why did you choose that solo trumpet? Well, first of all, it gave the sound that I was looking for at the volume that I wanted. It was convenient to get to because my left hand just had to jump one keyboard instead of two or three or even four. After we finish this trio sonata, the tempo picks up a little bit, and all of a sudden we have a French toccata. And you recall from our study of Vidor and Thou Art the Rock um, of late, a French toccata is a pattern um, of usually right hand, left hand, left hand, right hand, um, called French chatter. Um, in this case, the melody is played in the little fingers of the right hand, and the chords of the toccata are below that. Then, on the last page, there's a registration change where we add more of everything, brighter and deeper and richer, and it breaks forward in much larger chords, and then after that, the melody is done, and all we have is big chords, double-stopped pedals, which adds a lot of um, excitement and thickness and weight, and it's a really, really powerful piece. My teacher, Dr. Becker, recorded this on a recording that he made before I studied with him, so I've always listened to it and thought, you know, I can play that piece. I believe this Sunday is Reformation Sunday. The Mighty Fortress is our opening hymn. We'll be doing the last verse in a free accompaniment. You might want to tune in or come and listen. Um, you'll notice that as my hands get higher on the keyboards, that the sound gets thicker as well as brighter. This is very French in that they like to play in the upper part of the keyboard and bring on lower pitched stops for more gravity and power, richness, fullness, just the French sound. So A Mighty Fortress by Homer Whitford. Thank you for tuning in today, and may God bless you today and every day. Thank you.